Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're doing the Xfinity ECMWF European Outlook for today's uh, second video. So it's like a 30 day forecast, but we will have a look at weeks 5 and 6 data as well. And uh, we'll be uh, focusing on uh, not only the UK and Ireland, but also the wider European Outlook as well uh, with this uh, model. So uh, I shall get on back to you in a second. Just say the first video I see was our 6 m upload. And we've got Dan Tavorty today with all of the red features coming up for you later on this afternoon so please like share subscribe on the videos and we thank you so very much for doing that thank you to ecmd.at for supplying the charts as well uh by the way right so uh, we're going to start off with the week one mean sea level pressure i this is a week back we're currently in 22nd 29th of august you can get us into october by the way uh, this update. So, um, high pressure dominates really across much of northern Europe. You see a large ridge there, uh, extending right the way through uh, the north of Europe and out into the west of Europe as well. Lower pressure down into southern and uh, eastern parts of uh, Europe. And we are getting to the time of year now where that low pressure through the Mediterranean might start to generate instability and uh, some thunderstorms and whatnot as the summer, you know, is starting to. Not come to an end, but certainly it's getting in towards late summer now uh, across uh, Europe. This is the 500 millibar high country Arctic and North Pole view down. So, so you've got a large area of high pressure dominating, above average heights dominating across much of northern Europe. There is a trough of low pressure here across southern, southeastern parts of Europe and into the eastern part of the uh, Mediterranean. So temperature anomalies are looking like that. Very warm to hot week to come across most parts of Europe, but with a couple of exceptions. So it's a little bit cooler uh, towards Portugal, although actually most of Spain and Portugal are actually hotter than average. It is also cooler than average here in the far southeastern part of Europe, close to that trough of low pressure, semi east and southeastern part of Europe. So southern Italy, over the age of the Balkans, something down, particularly towards the Greek islands, uh, looking a little bit cooler than average through there. They are the exceptions. Otherwise, it's a very warm to hot sea, especially so through these east and northeast parts of Europe, so around the Baltic Sea, states like the Estonia, Lithuania, uh, back into west of Russia, very hot uh, through there, and really hot across western parts of Europe as well. We can see that too. So um, we've got uh, France, Low Countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands into Germany, just into Denmark as well, uh, with temperature temperature anomalies up to six degrees. Uh, above average, so so really warm to hot because most parts are, of Europe. Scandinavia looking uh, warm as well, pretty warm up there. Denmark up into um, Norway, Sweden, above temperatures through there. I think the UK, not as warm as it has been at some point through this summer, but even so, still a little bit uh, above average the temperatures uh, through there. Precipitation wise, again, we see lots of dry weather in many areas, but with the exception of this eastern and southeastern part of uh, Europe, uh, of Europe, so uh, f like from the Baltic Sea down towards um, the eastern bed, it's a bit wetter through there, especially so again around those Greek islands. So I think that trough of low pressure will be producing heavy showers and thunderstorms uh, through the weekend, a little bit wetter now across northern parts of uh, Spain as well. Uh, so some scattered thunderstorms through there. Otherwise, again, there are lots of dry weather. The central bowl of the Med looking pretty dry. And then going further north, once again, the emphasis is really on dry weather through much of Scandinavia, northern and uh, western Europe, Germany, France, low countries. Uh, UK Ireland continues to look very dry as it has been throughout most of this summer. Week uh, two will take us from the 29th of August to the 5th of September. High pressure still dominating across northern parts of uh, Europe. But it changed position a little bit, so perhaps putting in something slightly cooler in some of those northern uh, eastern parts of Europe, I would have thought, as we bring down a bit more of a northerly wind. Still some lower pressure on the far eastern side of Europe and into the central bowl uh, of the Mediterranean. Week 2, 500 millibar height anomaly looks like this. If you're going to refresh, there we go. Uh, with above average height, tend to pull a little bit further westwards, actually. So high pressure is beginning to move out to west just a little bit. Some lower pressure trough dropping into the north northeast. That should bring cooler weather into the north and the northeast of Europe. I would have thought a rich building in this east and southeastern part uh, of Europe probably suggests uh, drier and hotter weather. 
Right, so the week two temperature anomaly is cooling down across northern and northeastern parts of Europe. We're going below average in large portions of Scandinavia and into the northeast of Europe as well. We see the temperature cooling back down close to average, a little bit cooler than average to uh, parts of uh, Poland uh, as well. Uh, eastern Europe becomes hotter though, so uh, again we've got those eastern and southeastern areas uh, definitely getting hotter as we go into week two compared to week one, and looking hot through most of the central pole of Mediterranean as well. Remaining very warm up the western side of uh, Europe too, although it is a bit cooler around Portugal I suppose, but uh, much of western Europe actually looking uh, uh, warm and average again. France, Germany, low countries, Ireland, UK, above average temperatures continue through those areas. So a bit of a three-way split with uh, warmer weather through there, cooler weather through there, and then uh, we have warmer weather through there once again. Precipitation-wise for uh, week two, we look like that. Uh, becoming a little bit more unsettled across some parts of Europe. So, again, these eastern parts uh, from the age out of the Black Sea having some above average rainfall. At the same time, though, Greece looks like it's becoming uh, drier. It's a bit wetter than average to southern parts of France as well, rather than usually so for this uh, summer and into northeast of Spain, Portugal looking pretty dry. And then the driest weather is in the north, where we've got areas of high pressure. So, again, focus on the UK, on Ireland, on Scandinavia. Probably on the low countries, uh, we see that we have um, dry and average conditions with that large area of high pressure then. Week 3 is going to be the 5th to the 12th of September. The high pressure beginning to disappear a little bit. We've got low pressure here, or lower pressure, through these eastern and central parts of Europe and down into the Mediterranean. Uh, let's have a look at 500, otherwise it's a weakening signal, but let's have a look at 500 millibar high tonight. So the high pressure is kind of pulling away a little bit in towards the Atlantic. It's still there, though, in, in terms of a 500 millibar height. So anyway, high pressure pulls away towards our northwest, off low pressure uh, up there into the north of Russia. Otherwise, again, it is something of a weakening signal. The week three temperature anomaly. Uh, so we've got warm average conditions going on in the northwest, Ireland, UK, northern France, definitely the, the low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, into Germany, into the southern part of Scandinavia, so Denmark, southern Norway, and Sweden, above our temperature should bear. Further northwards, though, we see that temperature anomaly has no signal through these northern parts of Scandinavia and uh, down here into these Baltic sea states. And then across uh, many southern and eastern parts of Europe, again, it looks like no signal, maybe a little bit on the cooler side, Mediterranean, uh, certainly Mediterranean Central Bowl, uh, where we've got the very warm sea surface temperatures. Uh, there, of course, it remains pretty warm. And um, precipitation wise, week three looks like that. Driest in, but not, it's a weakening still as it is always is the further out you go, but driest in the north and northwest. So, Ireland, UK, Scandinavia, dry than normal through there. Uh, wetter than average across eastern parts of Europe. Again, particularly like, uh, uh, like Italy, Adriatic, Balkans, uh, those areas, probably Hungary, those sort of areas looking uh, quite wet. Maybe some more thunderstorms kicking off down towards the Greek islands, and possibly some first of to focus around the Balearic Islands as well, Mallorca, Minorca, Ibiza, perhaps again the first sort of uh, torrential rain of the, of the uh, autumn, autumn rains maybe. Otherwise, again, lots of white going on, so uh, singles are weak. But I think that could be a rather more unsettled week, actually, away from the far northwest of Europe. Anyway, week four will be the 12th to the 19th of September. So, uh, again, quite weak soon, but a little bit of high pressure still there across uh, the North Atlantic to the north of Scotland. Lower pressure uh, further south, though, and across eastern parts of Europe as well. The 500 millibar high time of week four looks like that with above average heights close to the UK. So the dry spell will go on, if this is right, across uh, the far west uh, of Europe. Meanwhile, trough low pressure will bring much more in way of unsettled weather into eastern parts of Europe, probably. The uh, temperature normally looks like that. So remaining warmer than average in the northwest with above average temperatures through there. Meanwhile, further eastwards, it's average is slightly cooler. Again, the bed looks quite warm. A lot of that down to sea, so temperature and norms, I expect, which are very, very hot, bring very, very hot uh, this, uh, this year. 
and the precipitation anomaly. So definitely an e a northwest southeast split. So dry sim and northwest. It's weak signal, but dry sim northwest, uh, wettest in this eastern and southeastern part of Europe, especially so far like eastern Europe actually. Ukraine towards the Black Sea, potentially looking really quite wet. Well, that's a 30-day look head done uh, for the next four weeks. Let's just have a week five and six before we go. So week five is the 19th, 26th of September. Quite a weak signal, but some low pressure. Perhaps sun should appear in the Atlantic. Could that be bringing something a little bit wetter into western parts uh, of Europe? Let's have a look at 500 millibar high to long. see what's going on with that. So also high pressure going north there as we're going into late September. High pressure going north. Maybe that could allow some lower pressure to be into moving from off the Atlantic. Let's put in a question mark. The uh, temperature normally looks like that. So still largely a, a above average, although only slightly so for the northwest of Europe and across the southern parts of Europe. Otherwise, there's lots of white going on, so lots of no signal. And the weak five temptation anomaly. It is a very weak signal, but might be hinting at something a bit more and so a bit wetter coming into western part of Europe. We have got a Berlash rainfall in the Atlantic, for example. And then lastly, week six will be the 26th of September to the 3rd of October. How does that look? Well, very, very weak signals uh, now as we come to the end of September into October. So let's just put in uh, a question mark and uh, we'll have a look at 500 millibar high tomney for week six. How's that one looking? Is it going to be fresh? Oh, it is. Um, so above average heights appearing across uh, southwestern parts of Europe, actually. So that will probably start to bring some warmer air uh, back northwards again, up that western side of Europe. The temperature anomaly uh, looks like that. Warmer. It's a warmer week across western parts of Europe anyway, with above average temperatures quite widely, actually, through there. Maybe hints of a bit of an Indian summer, but uh, that's a little bit later on in October, though. That would normally be after we've had the first ground frost. Temptation wise, um, very, very, very weak signal. Some of you are a bit dry but average, maybe a bit wet average in the north. But uh, again, signals are really weak for precipitation, as they always are, to be fair, by uh, week six. Okay, we're done. So that is your uh, extended European outlook uh, done and dusty this week. We're doing it all over again. Uh, next week, and we'll have a look at this one again, probably on Saturday morning, uh, with a focus on uh, Ireland and on the UK as well. That that will get us a little bit further on into uh, October, actually. Right, uh, well, we're going to be back shortly with the 10 to 14 day. That will include all our break features, so come back for that then. But for this week's EC 30 days slash six weeks, we'll get back for now, and thanks for watching.